Welcome everybody to the Aquarius New Moon Distant Reiki Share. I host these every new moon. So our next gathering will be for the Pisces New Moon on March 9th. That is a Saturday. So if you are open and available and free to come and join in the Reiki healing together, please go ahead and sign up for that. The link to do so is on my website and I'd love to have you. I am also available for one-on-one -on -one readings, astrology readings, a variety of readings as well as Reiki sessions. And I opened a couple more spots in my calendar. So if you've been thinking about booking, you can check the availability and see if there's a date and time that works for you with the service you're interested in. I am super excited about some classes coming up. My next Reiki and astrology class is on February 19th. This is Dreaming in the New Healed Timeline, and this is a class that is focusing on an upcoming transit on that day, which is the north node of the moon conjuncting Chiron and Aries, and Chiron is the healer, teacher, mentor, asteroid of such magnificent power and energies and we will be inviting in the higher frequencies of Chiron and the North Node which has to do with our collective destiny at this time as earth humans so really powerful class and if that's calling to you please feel free to come you don't need to have Reiki experience or astrology knowledge to be in that class and it will be recorded so if you can't make it live you will be able to access the recordings of that class and you'll be included in the circle as well as if you were there live in the moment on march 25th 27th i have a holy fire reiki master certification class so if you're interested in your next level of reiki training then this is for you. I'm also teaching Holy Fire Reiki 1 and 2 in April, April 4th and 5th. In both of these classes, I scheduled carefully according to my Reiki guidance. This is in the Eclipse portal and very, very powerful time to come together for healing, to take a Reiki training and particularly as Chiron, the asteroid that I was just sharing with y'all about, is actually figuring in very profoundly in a very bold way on our April eclipse. I believe it's April 8th. There's an Aries total solar eclipse. So this is wonderful if you've been feeling like you want to take a Reiki class, then this is kind of the time, you know, this is cosmically a good time definitely to be taking a Reiki class. And for more information about any of this, you can find it all on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. I want to take y'all now to more of our present moment experience. So as I was sharing, today is the Aquarius new moon. We're still in a balsamic moon phase at the time of this recording of this Reiki share. The new moon is exact today in a few hours. So it's a little after 9 a.m. Hawaii time right now. So in about four hours, a little less than four hours, the new moon will be exact. So this is a wonderful time to plant a seed of intention, embodying more of your authentic self. Aquarius is all about that. It's all about innovation and the future and you just being you in your funky, wacky, quirky, however you are authentically way. It's a great time to be doing the healing work to be learning about astrology, to be working with energy and coming together 
in the sanctity of community. Aquarius is a sign that's all about the community. And what I also wanted to mention is that first off, I did a really in-depth video about this new moon that y'all can tune into on my YouTube channel, Taylor Norris Reiki, if you want to explore more of the astrology. But one thing I just wanted to highlight and mention again is that this new moon is exactly opposite the asteroid called Atlantis, which is right now around 18 degrees, 36 minutes of the sign of Leo. And this is very significant in and of itself, just as an opposition. This is a very strong influx of Atlantean light codes, of Atlantean timeline, healing, remembering, revealing what those soul experiences were all about and releasing any kind of burdens, guilt, responsibilities, injuries, wounding related to any Atlantean soul experiences. And that may or may not be really alive for you. And if it is, great. And if it's not, that's okay too. The healing opportunities are vast and multi-galactic. But what's really interesting is when we have Atlantis in the chart of the new moon, it makes a mystic rectangle. It makes this sacred envelope. And what this really looks like, it's like there's an envelope. There's a message in this new moon for each of us to open up and reveal information whose time has come to be invited into the light of awareness so that whatever new beginnings that you're making, whatever seeds you might be planting for this lunar cycle, that they are done so with this information in mind. And again, any healing or letting go that needs to happen, allowing space for that to happen, because the other energies in this sacred mystic rectangle are the nodes of the moon, the north node of the moon in Aries, the south node of the moon in Libra, which is about our collective soul growth and destiny at this time. The energies we're stepping into more strongly, these Aries frequencies, and the energies and archetypes we are up-leveling and upgrading, releasing the shadow expressions of Libra, which can be too other oriented and indecisive and a bit of a pushover people pleaser, not having the clear sense of self that Aries has that clear sense of self, that sense of identity and moving closer to asteroid Chiron here, which that conjunction is exact in about 10 days using the true node of the moon. There's also a mean node, which is not mean like hostile. It's mean like the average. I work with the true node because that means where they actually are. It's not a, you know, right, wrong, better, worse. It's just whichever node you want to work with. I tend to work with the true one. Very cool new moon. We will be working with this energy for sure in the Reiki journey in just a few more minutes. But before we get into that, I wanted to project us all forward into time. This is what I do in my life. We're going forward. We're going backwards all the time, multidimensionally. And mention to y'all some highlights, some astrological highlights coming up in the next couple weeks. So on February 13th, we have Mars conjunct Pluto. Shortly afterwards, we have February 16th, Venus conjunct Pluto. This is a complete transformation and divine masculine Mars embodiment of this new energy 
Pluto in Aquarius that all of us are still very much getting used to as Pluto moved back into Aquarius just a little while ago, January 20th. So our whole divine masculine energy, our will, our motivation, this is like the male component of our embodiment, our ego, our identity is being upgraded by Pluto. So there can be a lot of purging, letting go, releasing, letting die of parts of that divine masculine inner male archetypal energies within oneself to make space for a rebirth into a more authentic expression of that Mars archetype. So very powerful February 13th. Great day to be doing peace meditations because sometimes in the collective, this can manifest and in yourself. I mean, let's be honest too. There may be very powerful emotions and powerful things coming up. So really anchoring in that peace vibration, being gentle with yourself is very, and with others is very, very important. February 16th, we have the same thing happening, but with Venus. Venus comes into conjunction with Pluto. So we have the divine feminine aspect within ourselves engaging in this radical transformation process, letting go, purging any kind of traumas held within our feminine nature, held within our relationships, our creativity, our sense of value, our sense of self-worth. These are all due for a major Plutonian upgrade that is cohesive with and gelling with the new energy of Pluto and Aquarius and what really wants to come through with this new consciousness, this awakened consciousness. So very, very powerful. And on this day, I would say inviting in grace would be really important and supportive and compassion as well. On February 19th, we have the true node of the moon conjunct Chiron in Aries. This is the transit I'm teaching about in my upcoming class, Dreaming in the New Healed Timeline. It's a wonderful time for healing in whatever way you feel guided to engage in healing that makes you feel more embodied in your authentic self, clearer in your identity, and very empowered and sovereign, because that's much of what the healed expression of Aries is about. It's an opportunity to fully, to more fully align with whatever your healed timeline is, and empower that in the collective as well. Because whatever healing you're doing for yourself really ripples out and matters and makes stronger and makes more accessible and available to others to come along for the ride, the smoother ride, the higher vibe ride. It really, really does matter a lot. So taking some time for yourself, Aries, being a little self-centered, soul-centered, and making your needs count and making sure you are taking into account your own healing needs at that time. On the 21st, this is really cool. I'm very excited about this. We have the Venus and Mars conjunction in the sign of Aquarius. They have not been conjunct in quite some time. I can't this for sure. The first time they are conjuncting in Aquarius since Pluto's moved into Aquarius. That's for sure. And this is really beautiful. It's very powerful. This is about moving towards union and unification consciousness, the 
the divine feminine Venus, the divine masculine coming together, embodying, unifying the new consciousness, the new healed timeline, the new way forward, the new paradigm, Aquarius. And this is just lovely. This is after both Venus and Mars will have experienced their transformational process as they conjunct Pluto. So coming together in a more healed, purified, and cleared out way, this is just beautiful. And this leads in beautifully to our full moon in Virgo on February 24th, which I will do a separate video on. A Virgo is a sign of healing. So coming in the aftermath of this conjunction, it's like really moving towards that unification consciousness. And I did take a sneak peek at the galactic alignments for the full moon and they're really beautiful and they are speaking to that unification consciousness on the screen i also have the galactic alignments for the venus mars conjunction and they are really beautiful as well so we see the sun is going to be conjunct royal star fomo halt which speaks to that unification and christ consciousness expression of the divine feminine and the divine masculine coming together in union. So I thought that was very significant. Jupiter with Shadir star and Cassiopeia being that queenly divine feminine resonance coming in strongly. Actually, the conjunction Venus Mars is squaring Jupiter. So this would be a very loud signature of that divine feminine, that queenliness, that healing of how do we find balance within these, these poles, these polarities, these dualities within ourselves, and express that more so out in the world so that we're not in full-on patriarchy, we're not on full-on matriarchy, we're somewhere in the middle, we're balanced, we're unified, we're whole. So this is very, very exciting. Mercury's also opposite Hydra, Alphard star, and this particular constellation and star does have a lot to do with the twin flame experience, the experience of one soul splitting into two, a masculine and feminine counterpart. So it seems like an indication that our mental bodies, Mercury, can experience a greater sense of unification on that level as well. So we are definitely very supported here. And one other energy I'll just point out before we look at the Sabian symbol for this conjunction is that Lilith is conjunct Thuban star in Draco constellation. That's one of our dragon whole star constellations. But Lilith is also opposite Deneb Adish star in Cygnus constellation. Cygnus is the swan, and this star is the shaman star. Lilith is our cosmic dark feminine the parts of the divine feminine that have been more repressed, suppressed, kind of cast off, cast aside, demonized, straight up demonized Lilith. This is, um, yeah, some pretty shadow aspects, but not an energy to be afraid of whatsoever. It's an energy to be, to be healed and awakened and ignited and and invited into the light, frankly, here. So with Lilith opposite the star in Deneb Adige, I thought that was so significant because when we look at the Sabian symbol for this conjunction, which is right here, this is Aquarius 7, that's the degree they're coming together. And the symbol is a child is seen being born out of an egg. And Deneb Adige star in Cygnus constellation, which Lilith is opposite, is connected to the world egg, the cosmic egg, this universal, multi-galactic, multi-dimensional 
egg and to see this symbol figuring into this conjunction, the keynote, the theme, the emergence of a global man, the emergence of a new human, this particular interpretation of the Sabian symbol comes from astrologer Dane Roger. So it's written in his way. These aren't my words here. But what it what it evokes is this sense of of being birthed anew as our whole selves. And the image I was guided to, I tried to make one with the AI and I was not satisfied. Sometimes it just doesn't work. But what I found and what I was guided to was this image of Jesus. And similar ones are shown in various churches and sacred spaces across the earth. And what's very cool, there are many dimensions. I mean, this could be a whole class on just this one image. But Jesus is in, within the Vesica Pisces, which is the geometry that's formed when you have two circles drawn. It's like the, the middle part of a Venn diagram. And this is the seed of life. You can also look at it as a, a kind of egg, a kind of portal, gateway, multidimensional doorway, seed frequency, egg frequency, that Jesus as a representation of our enlightened and awakened soul selves, soul and spirit selves is within. And for the astrology curious ones among us, we can look in the corners here of the image and we see representative symbols of each of the fixed signs. So here in the right hand corner is the eagle. And this is one of the signs of the zodiac sign Scorpio, the scorpion, scorpion constellation, Scorpio, the zodiac sign, which is, you know, typically the scorpion, but also linked to the eagle and the phoenix. Scorpio has uh, arguably the most number of uh, symbols and representatives of it. So go Scorpio. We have in the left hand corner here, Aquarius, the water bearer, this human like angelic figure bearing the water, carrying the water. This is the water bearer containing the liquid life, the liquid light. And Aquarius is an air sign, despite sounding like it would be a water sign. Scorpio is the water fixed sign. Aquarius is the air fixed sign. And then down here, we have the lion representing Leo, the fixed fire sign, Leo constellation. And then here we have, yes, this is the bull. This is Taurus the bull. It's kind of an odd looking bull. I'm not going to lie. I mean, this is an odd looking lion. It has wings. So maybe the, the ancient lions, the winged lion beings, right? This is weird only from like a normative earth human perspective. But here, this is a bull representing Taurus the bull. So we have all the fixed energies. We have this invitation into more of our authentic self, more of our ascended avataric soul and spirit potential here with this conjunction. So it's very, very exciting. There's a lot to unpack. And I was excited to at least share this little bit about it.